get me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here ended the word of the Lord, and I be honored by saying, Amen. Amen. Glory. Glory to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. And we are just so blessed to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Yes. Amen. Yes. Just so God. blessed. How about you? Uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, Brother Henry, Brother Mattis, and myself have been here. And the number of accidents that we see right outside the church. And uh, he was just telling me this morning that Friday they were here. I wasn't here on Friday. And, and they had two accidents right there, right close to where they were standing. God has spared them. Amen. Yes, and I'm so excited it. about Jesus. How about you? God, he does indeed lead us beside still waters. Amen. Amen.
church this is really a day that the Lord has made I couldn't believe I was walking without hip in this morning you know glory hallelujah you know I've been walking like granny walk and rock that's me anyway hallelujah welcome 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 Amen. those in radio land those in the internet we're so glad to be here anybody here for the first time Glad to see you, Sister Faye. We miss you. Honest, we miss you. So let us all continue worshiping and give our praise to the Lord. Thanks for coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm, I want to raise a song this morning. I feel good. Okay. I feel good, good, good. I feel good, wonderful, good. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good. I feel good, good. I feel really wonderful, good. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good, good. I feel good, good, good. I feel good, wonderful, good. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good, I feel good, good, good. I feel very wonderful, good. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good, good, I feel wonderful. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good. I feel good, good, I feel good, wonderful, good. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good. So, Pastor, can we raise another song and then we do the offering? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You are my all in all. I 
Jesus, 
Every 
to be in the house of the Lord another Sunday morning Amen. and it's good to see all of you down there Amen. Praise I'm God. especially glad to see our newly wedded couple Amen. Praise Mr. God. and Amen. Mrs. Woods Amen. Wood or Woods? Woods. Woods? Woods and it's good to have you stand so that others can see who you are Amen. Praise God. Amen. God bless you glad to have you and Sister Fair like Sister Matthew said we miss you Terrible. I don't know who gave you the authority and the uh, mm -hmm. we're gonna fix that authority for you to move away from us, but we do miss you. I know where you are is much nicer and sunnier, but you know, pardon? The, yes, the alligators out there. Check out on I seventy five. Anyway, we're glad to have all of you this morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And that song we just sang, Our Lord, I give you my life. I give you my all. I give you my soul. You know, it, it's, it's such a wonderful song. And just, you know, whenever I sing it, or whenever we sing it together, I just think of the fact that the person who we are, who we are singing to, the Lord, He's worthy to be worshipped. And that's why he placed us on this earth, to worship him, only to worship him. Very often we think we can do things by ourselves, but God has placed us here just to worship him. And when we worship him, that's why he says in his word, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all other things shall be added. But we like to do it backwards, you know. We like to try to get the added things first and then worship God. It doesn't work like that. So we need to worship God. And the things that we need, not the things that we want, but the things that we need, God will supply them. It's good to see you again, as I said before, and welcome to Ladies Ministry Sunday. I know Pastor's been doing the praise and worship, and, um, and we thank him for that. But we are going to continue in worshiping the Lord. Amen. Our scripture this morning was taken from Psalm 23, and it's a very familiar portion of scripture but I'm only going to deal with five words. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Five words to live by. And the reason I thought of this is one day I, I woke up and I was just, you know, just reading and I was reading this particular passage of scripture and I've read this many times. We have all read Psalm 23 many times. We read it to the point where we know it by heart. We know all the words. We don't even have to open our Bibles to read it. But the thought came to me, the Lord is my shepherd. And I was just stuck on those five words. And those five words came home to me and I said, you know what, I don't have time to go in depth to the whole scripture, to those five words. 
let me come back at it another time. And so since then, this has been a couple of weeks, since then thoughts have been coming in my mind as to how, go, how to go about speaking this morning about these, what was revealed to me. That's how I should put it. You see, the psalm was we know it to be a psalm of David written around 1000 BC before Christ and attributed to King David, originally written in Hebrew. Now, let me reveal the revelation that I got. And I want you to listen carefully. We're going to go back a little, we're going to st take steps and we're going to do um, a little English this morning. And I know Sister Faye is a good English teacher. My husband is a very good English teacher. So bear with me. I'm not strong at English. But just bear the Im important points to mind. Now, the Lord is my shepherd. Normally, the, we personalize this. And we, when we read it, we say, the Lord is my shepherd. We don't think about the Lord being your shepherd or someone else's shepherd. We personal, personalize it and say, he's my shepherd because of what he has done for me, because of what he is about to do for me. And so when I read this particular passage of scripture, um, let me take it slowly, I was looking at the fact that the word the is used to, to define a noun. Sometimes it's classified as an article, which is a word used to define a noun. Sometimes it technically can be used as an, ad for an adjective as well. And sometimes it functions as an adverb in certain circumstances. The word the is considered a definite article because it defines the meaning of a noun as one particular thing. It gives a noun a definite meaning. The, the word the, refers to a specific person place or a thing. So here we have the Lord. And if you notice in your Bibles, when you read, if you look in your Bibles or your tablet, the word Lord is, the L is in capital letters, is in the capital letter. Or they capitalize the word L. So the word the refers to one particular person. So we are here speaking about the Lord. Not a Lord, not Lord Michael or M Lord David or Lord anything else, Lord anywhere in the world. We're talking about the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. We're talking about the Lord over everything. This Lord that we're talking about is a person of dignity, a person of honor a person of majesty, a person of authority, and a respectful person. This person or, or, or deity who has authority, he has control and power over others. He lives above his people or the people he governs. He never lives beneath his calling. That is a typical Lord. Now, the responsibilities of a Lord in today's day, well, in days gone by, I should say, let us do it in days gone by first. They were expected to have the taxes taken from the people to pay to the king. They were expected to provide soldiers when needed. They were given the power over the estate of the land or colony. They were the ones who presided over the people and listened to the people's complaints. And they oversaw the running of the farmlands. In today's day, the, the Lord would be equivalent to a landlord whose responsibility it is to provide safety, a clean, healthy living environment for his or her tenants. But... We are talking about the Lord, our Lord, the Lord who left the splendor of heaven, knowing his destiny, knowing that his destiny was a lowly hill of Golgotha where he would have to lay down his life for me and you. We're talking about the Lord 
who is, as I said, the king of kings. We talked about so far the, and we talked about Lord. Now the next part of the verse says, after it says the Lord is the next, ver the next word is is. Is is a verb. It is written and spoken in English. It expresses existence or state of being. It is classified under linking verbs, such as he is the most intelligent student in the class. So it is a linking verb because it connects the subject, which is he, with the predicate, the most intelligent student in my class. Are you with me so far? Okay. Now the Lord is the subject. Is is the verb. And the predicate is my shepherd. My refers to belonging to or associated, associated with the speaker. It is a possessive adjective which is a type of pronoun used before, pro, used before nouns. They explain ownership, or the word my explains ownership. So in this, call, in this case, the Lord belongs to me. He is associated with me. I am making him my personal Lord. But with all of this understanding of the English language, the adverbs and the adjectives, pronouns and nouns, the most important thing that stuck with me is that the Lord is my shepherd. And so we looked at all the responsibilities of a typical Lord, and now let us look at David and why he said, the Lord is my shepherd. David spoke from experience. His job as a shepherd was to do many things, to entail many things. He knew that he had to make sacrifices as a shepherd. He knew he had dangers to face. He knew he had a price to pay in order to be a shepherd. And so David, looking at his life as a shepherd, was able to say, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, I've spoken to you, if you remember um, before, how many times before, I'm not certain, but my brother is here with me. He knows what I'm going to, in other words, what I'm, where I'm coming from. Now, growing up in Barbados, now, we had, we raised sheep. Now, coming from England at 10 years old, one of the things we did was not raising sheep. We were just new to the country of Barbados. It was myself, my two brothers, of which David here is the youngest. And so when we came to Barbados, we had one particular sheep that stayed with us. We, not knowing the difference between having a pet and um, a livelihood, we had we had, what we had was a billy sheep. It's not a goat, it's a sheep, but it's a billy sheep. Why we have it, why you call it a billy sheep is because it has horns. So it was, it was small at first as, you know, a little lamb, and it grew up and grew up, and we used to have, sometimes he was so comfortable with us, he would come in the house and he would walk around the house and, some, and then he would climb out through the, um, the back door and go back outside, graze. And we only had a little spot of lamb, a little spot of um, area because we had not started building the house that we were meant, we were going to build as yet. We were just renting at a particular place. So the space was maybe about the, um, say from where Sister Smith is to where Sister, um, Harris is coming up to maybe where the speaker is, just that small amount of land with little grass. And so the, the goat would be out the side, the sheep would be out there, and he would graze, but sometimes he would come in the house. But then if you're not careful, if you're outside doing something, you're bending down some, doing something, this billy sheep would butt you, and then you fall flat on your face. So this was what we knew as the beginning. But then when we moved to our new house, my brother, my father, my mother, they decided to raise sheep. So we had a lot of sheep gradually getting bigger and bigger. How much was it before you left? 
about 30 something sheep before my brother left and this was just like two, two years ago. So we had all these sheep and my, my brother had this um, plan was to fence in the area, it was two acres of land, fence it in with um, electrical fencing. So if the sheep go close to it, there are no nuts that they can't go any further. Why I say all of this is to say that my brother was seen as the shepherd with the sheep. He knew the responsibilities of taking care of sheep. His job was to protect them, to make sure they're fed, make sure they're watered, make sure they have plenty of grass. And we would separate certain parts so that you leave other parts to, for the grass to grow so that the sheep, and sheep are typical animals who would just nibble and nibble and nibble all day. And then when you think not, if you're not careful, you have no grass. And then you have to go out and get the sickle and cut grass. And don't think because I look like this, I don't know what a sickle is. I know what a sickle is. I have the experience of cutting grass with the sickle and bringing back to help feed the sheep because all their resources have gone. So we um, divided sections and each couple of days we would put the sheep in various sections short so they would graze. So here getting back to David, he knew how to take care of sheep. His job was to protect them from the wolves, from the bears, from wild animals, and even from traps. And I know a little bit about protecting sheep from wild animals, because I remember one day my brother wasn't home, and it was just, my brothers weren't home, I should say, and it was just me. And my brother had a pit bull, and one of the sheep kind of got too close. I shouldn't say kind of, he got too close to this pit bull. And before you know it, that pit bull had that sheep's leg in its mouth. And I'm here wondering, how am I going to get this sheep rescued? But to God be the glory, and I'm saying that because I called upon God and it's like he was giving me direction. I was able to pry that let sheep's um, leg out of the pit bull's mouth and let the sheep escape so that I can shorten the leash on the pit bull. And so I know what David is saying when his job was to rescue from wolves and from wild animals. And that was his job. His job was also to find grass for them. Because as I said, sheep can, nib can nibble at the grass all day long. His job was to find water. His job was to find a safe place for them to rest and to sleep. His job was to bring the sheep to the fold at night and to keep them safe. Imagine having sheep to the point where they know your voice. And that's why God said, my sheep know my voice and they hear my call and they come. And that's how close the relationship is for the shepherd and the, sh and the sheep. Shepherds have to get to the point where they sometimes have to help the sheep deliver the young ones, the lambs into the fold, and to groom them and to share them. So after eating all day, the shepherd's responsibility is, like I said, take them back to the fold and to stay at the gate and protect them. The shepherd's life was one of solitude. In the Bible times, the shepherd's life, like I said, was one of solitude. Why? Because it took, their job took them into far places in order to feed the sheep. And they, like I said, they had to find grass. The life of the shepherd would take them sometimes out of their community, away from their family, away from who they knew. The typical job of a shepherd is not a nine to five job. It is not a job where you can just go in at any time you want. Your hours are flexible. No. The shepherd's job was to go from place to pl place to place to find pasture, to find food, to find rest, and to be renewed. Sometimes the shepherd would be gone for days, sometimes weeks, sometimes months. 
and all the while who be living in the exposed elements of rain and sunshine and storms, all because he needed to take care of the sheep. You see, the shepherd's job was not an easy job. Do you know why? Because sheep are very interesting creatures. They're interesting because they appear passive and that they're not going to do much or they can't do much. And they appear cuddly, just like our sheep we had when we first moved to Barbados. They can be sociable. They can see, find you as being good company around them. But they can be very cantankerous. They can be very out of control. You have to guide them and lead them. And that's why David had to use his staff and his rod to guide them constantly. And not only David, but the typical normal shepherd. Sheep tend to stick together. They're well acquainted with the shepherd's, shepherd's voice and they follow the shepherd's command and the voice wherever he leads. Sheep do not fight back. They do not run and they do not hide. They all stick together. What does that tell us as a body of Christ? Are we supposed to stick together? Or are we supposed to, if someone goes down, it's like, oh, you by yourself. It is, as I was thinking, you know, it is like all for one and one for all, like the three musketeers. And that's how we're supposed to be. Instead, if the sheep are attacked, when a predator appears, they come together, giving the predator the choice of who are, who are they going to choose to separate from, the, from, the, from the, um, the rest of the sheep. You see, the wolves are seen as the worst enemy because wolves are cunning. They are very sneaky. They're constantly trying to get at the sheep. And that's why the Bible warns of wolves in sheep's clothing that we are to be beware of wolves in sheep clothing because wolves are fierce animals and they will devour you in a minute. So let's take a look at God and what God wants us to see. See, in the Bible, I want us to look carefully. Why I want us to look carefully is because I said at the beginning, we're looking at five words. The Lord is my shepherd. So we looked at the Lord. We looked at the shepherd. But what we want to look at further is the the shepherd in the Bible, or and also sheep. So sheep were, in the Bible, sheep were valuable creatures. They're protected by day and night. The shepherd was the one who protected them. The sheep were cared for by the shepherd because they, were rep they represented wealth. That was sheep in the Bible. But in the Palestinian times, Shepherding was a noble occupation. It was even the wealthy sons who, did, who had the responsibility of looking after the sheep. But in the Judaism times, the shepherds were referred to in, a, in belittling terms, such as they were seen as incompetent or and they had no civil rights. They were seen as, as um, having a dirty job. But then in Christ's day, shepherds stood at the bottom rung of the Palestinian social ladder. So they were way, 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 way down. They shared the same, un, um, the same status as a tax collector because, you know, when the tax collector like Matthew was seen, people didn't want to see him, didn't want to be around him, didn't want to know where he was. And so... Th Sheep, shepherds were seen as that, in that same light, just like a tax collector. And even worse, shepherds were seen as dung sweepers. That is way, way down. Only Luke mentions them in his, in his, um, in his, book, in his book. Shepherds were despised by the people. 
they could not fulfill judicial offices, and they could not be admitted in court as witnesses. So that is why in Jerusalem, during the time of, in, of Jesus, the rabbis asked with amazement, how in view of the despicable nature of shepherds can one explain why God was called my shepherd in Psalm 23 verse 1? You see, religious leaders maintained a strict caste system and shepherds were labeled as sinners, a term used for a class of despicable people or despised people. So I join with David and I say with pride, the Lord is my shepherd. Why? Because Christ stooped way below our level to get to us. He condescended himself. He looked beyond all of our faults and he saw our needs. And that did not stop him from coming to our level. He was marginalized by society and by the elite. He was called many names. He gave up his lordship to become someone who was despised and rejected of men. Not only that, John looked at the path in John chapter 10, if you read on your, in your own time, John chapter 10, verse 11 through 18, the Lord went even further, further than David and said, D David said, the Lord is my shepherd. But John looked further and said in the passage that Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And not only did he say, I am the good shepherd, he said, I'm not a hireling. And why is that? Because a hireling is a person employed to undertake menial work, number one, is considered domestic help, is a helper, a person who is paid for doing a job that is not respected or considered or is considered morally wrong. He is, um, only works for a paycheck, a paycheck, that's all. The heroine does um, only works because he's expecting a paycheck at the end of, his jo of the job. He is not concerned about what the job entails and he is not going to do it with all of his energy, of all of his might. The, the heroine, is, heroine is not willing to make the sacrifice that a shepherd would make. He does not concern himself with the value of the work and he would neglect the sheep at any time. The heroine's job is only to concern about himself. It's me, myself, and I. Because if he sees a wolf coming, he will leave the sheep and hightail it out of there. He doesn't care if the sheep catches the, the, if the wolf catches the sheep, and he doesn't care what will happen. Because the wolf will catch a sheep if the heroine runs. The, sheep, the wolf will scatter them and at least catch one or two or whatever, or catch one and injure it, go for another one and catch it and injure it to the point where they can't move. But, and I say, but again, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. You know why? Because I will leave the 99 to look for the one sheep that goes astray. And it, it, if we think about it in our way of looking, if we have 99 sheep and the way how we think today, would we really go after the one that goes astray? We're thinking that's only one. 99 is more important. We have more meat here, more meat that we can kill and sell. But not Jesus. He doesn't think like, he doesn't think like us. You see, we would typically think that the 99 are important, the one is not. But God does not think like man. And just, just like the Marines, no man left behind. Or like the U.S. Army Rangers Creed says, I will never leave a fallen comrade to fall into the hands of the enemy. And so Christ says to us, we are all important to him. 
The very hairs on our head are numbered, and he knows us all. The 99, yes, they will be safe and secure and nourish, but the one that is lost is part of the flock and needs rescuing. So he goes out and seeks and saves that lost one. So look at the Lord of Lords, our King of Kings. The reason why David said he is my shepherd is because the Lord, who did not have to come down from heaven and leave his throne above, he came down and became my shepherd, taking on all the despicable names and all the name calling and all the rejection. He came down and became my shepherd. And so not only is he your shepherd, but he is my shepherd. He identifies with me. And so he brings me, it brings me to the place of preparation where he can feed me. He can bring me to green pastures and make sure that the pastures are always green. So I will always be fed. Not only does the good shepherd do that, but he leads me beside still waters. You know why? Because sheep do not like running water. They do not like water that is moving. The water has to be still. And so God knows my fears. He knows my anxiety. He knows my cares. And he makes sure that he brings me to still waters so that I can drink. He knows that he can protect me. He protects me from the wolves. He protects me from the wild animals, from the snares and the traps that might be, that might be placed in front of me. His job as my shepherd is to take care of me. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. He is the one, not only does he walk with me, but even walking with me in the valley of the shadow of death, I can fear no evil because he is with me. He restores my soul when he knows that I'm weak in body, when it feels as if I can't go on, when it feels as if I'm so weak till I can't stand, or I feel so weak, tired, and weak and tired spiritually, mentally, physically. He restores my soul and he brings me to his word and he tells me about his word. He reminds me of his word and scriptures that you haven't remember for years and years ago he just brings to our remembrance and he walks with us and he talks to us and tells us he cares not only does he restore our soul but he guides us in righteousness he brings us to himself we have nothing to fear in the desert here because jehovah is leading us and when he sees me going astray or going, not going the way that he wants, he uses his rod and his staff and he pulls me in and he protects me and he draws me in because he knows this is my child, this is my sheep, I will do anything. And he proved that by leaving the throne above and coming down and dying on the cross of Calvary. So in basic English version, the basic English version, of verse 5 says, you make ready a table for me in front of my haters. You put oil on my head and my cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. Why? Because I can trust him. Because I can depend upon him. Because he is there when everyone else is gone. Because when my, friend, my friends or family fail, I can always depend on God. And we sang that song many times before, I can depend on God. I can depend on God. I might not be able to depend on you. You might not be able to depend on me. But I know I can depend on God. And because of that, because of that, I can say, and we all can say, the Lord who came down from heaven, he is my shepherd. He took upon himself the form of man and became my shepherd to protect me, to guide me, to direct me, to protect me, to feed me, to take care of me. These five words we can live by, the Lord is my shepherd. If nothing else, remember this, 
The Lord is my shepherd. And if you take it a little step further in that same verse, says, I shall not want, or I will lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd. And because of that, I can say I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Amen. If you know this song, you can sing it with me.
storm rage high, the dark cloud rise. They will worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He was with me. When all is said and done, what matters most to us is that security that we have in Jesus Christ. I've often shared the story about my big brother, Luke. Luke is six feet. He's the tallest one in our family. Luke is 200 and many pounds. I call him my Mike Tyson. And um, I used to give trouble. I couldn't fight to save my life. I would pick on you, I get the fight started. And then I back out and let Luke handle the fight. I have that comfort in knowing that Luke is always there. Now Luke doesn't talk much. He doesn't laugh a lot. He just stands there and he just looks. But one hand on you and it's over. I had that security. It doesn't matter who I am confronted by. I can always run to Luke. But even Luke has a limit. But Jesus, our shepherd, does not have a limit. Whatever we are facing, and, and, and what blesses me about this shepherd is that it doesn't matter what kind of fight you have, he is equipped to handle that fight. That's why Paul says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He said, therefore, take on to you the whole armor of God. In other words, make sure that you are in Jesus Christ. If you are in him, he handles whatever you have to handle. The Lord is my shepherd. There is a comfort in knowing that, that he will always be there. He feeds us. He sustains us. He clothes us. He shelters us. That's our shepherd, and it's so good to know that we have Jesus Christ as our shepherd. Don't lose out on this kind of protection because it's not easy, easy to come by. He's one of a kind. I was listening, I think it was John MacArthur this morning, talking about Jesus. And he was saying that when God decided to send Jesus, the Bible says he sent his only begotten son, meaning he is one of a kind. You, there was never one like him before. There never will be one after him. And so we have found him as our refuge. Let us keep him, as David says, as our refuge and our strength. A present help in time of trouble. God bless you, Joan, for this word this morning. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Uh, once again, it's good to Evangelist Brown. God bless you. Good to have you in the house with us this morning again. Amen. Good to have, uh, to see all this. Sister Faye, I don't know why you decided. You really picked a bad time to move. Uh, let me just tell you, some of you don't know the history of me and Sister Faye. 2002, we moved to Springfield. Our family moved to Springfield. She was the first person to invite the whole family over for lunch after church one Sunday. You remember that? She was the first person to invite us over for lunch. So there is a bond between me and Sister Faye. And you don't know this, but Sister Faye has moved to Florida. I'm kind of mad, but I understand the thinking. And, uh, you know, God allowed, her to, God, you know, allowed her to change her mind from Springfield. I believe God can in the future allow her to change her mind from Florida as well. <laughs> Amen. 
But we pray, we pray for you. I, I know you, you will still be going back and forth for a little while, right? Amen. So God bless you. So just let us know when, when you when you proceed that the last time will be. Amen. Because we want to pray a special prayer on you and bless you before you go. Amen. God bless you. And again, uh, the words, uh, amen, we are just so delighted having you in church uh, this morning. Amen. Sister Faye is leaving, but we have we have her children. Amen, and we are just so glad to have you. Amen, God bless you. I want you to know, church, uh, that God is indeed our refuge and strength. Whatever you do, always comfort yourself with this. Amen. I know that things may not necessarily be what we want them to be, but understand this. Everything that we need, we already have it. Oh, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. Everything that we need, we already have it. Some of them have just not yet been actualized in our experiences, but we have everything that we need. Amen. So we can trust God. Just let God handle his business. Let God do what God does in our lives. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Would you stand with me, please? And while we are standing, I just want to acknowledge, amen, Sister Ava's work. Uh, all this fancy stuff. Shut your mouth. All, all, this, all this, this fancy stuff here. Sister Ava is doing all this. She made all these decorations for us, and this week she added to it. D didn't she do good? Amen. Praise, praise God. Amen. You're offering crochet lessons, Sister Ava? You need to teach somebody to take up the helm after we are gone, you know, so you... Amen. Uh, listen, you have to you have to make sure you start learning how to do this kind of thing, okay? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Father, we thank you today. What an awesome word you have sent to us through your servant. God, sometimes you send your word and we receive it, but not with open hearts like we should. But God, we thank you for this word today, Heavenly Father. First, we thank you for the woman that you used to speak to us today. We pray, God, that you'll anoint her with fresh oil. Continue to give her insight in your word. That God, each time she stands up to minister, Lord, we will be blessed, we will be educated, and we will be uplifted. God, we pray for this word that came to us, that these words, Almighty God, will find good soil in each of our lives. That God, we will be governed by the principles we learned from this word. That the very thought of you being our shepherd, oh God, will be a source of comfort to us as your people. We pray, Almighty God, that you'll touch and bless us. That God, you'll anoint our hearts to fear your name. That Jesus Christ, we will lean and depend on you completely. That God, when we have exhausted our resources, when we have exhausted, oh God, ourselves, God, we will know, Lord, that we have our course, which is Jesus Christ. That God will understand that we have you eternal God as our eternal resource. Help us, O oh Heavenly Father, to trust you. In these times, Lord, when we find that fearsome matters around us are prevailing. Things, Lord, that will cause us to fear more. We ask you, Jesus Christ. That we will understand, Lord God Almighty, that you are indeed our refuge and strength. That we will understand that they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which shall not be removed. That they, God, who trust in God, even when they walk through the valley of the shadow of death, they have no need to fear any evil because, God, you are with them, even in the valley of the shadow of death. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that God our hearts will be open to your working. That our minds, Lord, will be open to receive what you have for us. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray that you'll bless us. God, we love you and we are committed to loving you for the rest of our lives. We ask you, O oh God, that you'll help us to live lives that testify of the love of Jesus. 
Lives that spread the gospel to a dying world. Lives, almighty God, that you will be pleased of. Father, hear us now, we pray. Let the very words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. For those among us, God, who are not doing well, we pray, Lord God, that you'll visit with them now. That you'll heal their bodies now, God. I pray, God, it'll begin with their minds. Because, God, we have come to understand that the mind must be delivered in order for the body to truly be healed. So we pray, God, it'll touch our minds. Lord, God, help us to receive healing by faith in Jesus Christ. And if we receive it by faith, then it will be manifested in our bodies. We pray, oh God, for those who have problems that they think they can manage, God Almighty, that Jesus Christ will help them to understand you as the problem solver. Jesus Christ Almighty, we pray for those who have needs, that Lord, you will supply every need. Your word promised that you'll supply all our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Breathe on us, O breath of God, and fill us with life anew. As we go from this house, Lord, but not from your presence. Go with us, we pray. Protect each of my brothers and sisters. Cover them under your blood, Jesus Christ. Gather them under your wings like a hen does her chicks. God, like the shepherd does his lambs. Protect your children, we pray. God, we don't know exactly what is in your mind, but should you tarry long enough for us to meet again next week, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And God, we shall be careful to give you thanks and praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Greet somebody. Greet somebody. Say, tell somebody I love you. Amen. God bless you. Good, good.